The research project was launched today by the new NRI director, Dr. Osborne Sanida and Dr. Webster. They say the Bougainville referendum is an important milestone in PNG's history and there should be a lot more time and resources invested to it. Uh, the joint uh, the, the, the committee that looks in, is supposed to deal with issues, the implementation of the peace agreement, sometimes they have not been operating as effectively as they should uh, be operating. It. And what we need to do is that the body should be strengthened and the issues put on and, and continual engagement. And uh, so we need to invest time in the, board, in the leaders of both sides. I think on the Bougainville side, they're well aware of the issues they really want to get on. On the PNG side, there are a whole lot of other issues, and like the elections and so on, and they've not been engaged and what we would like to see is more engagement with the Bougainville government and you know, address those issues in a constructive way so that they prepare adequately for the referendum. NRI's research is aimed at generating information that can be used by all stakeholders during the referendum process. One, the first question is, what is a referendum? Well, in PNG, we've never had referendums. It's never been provided for in our constitution. But many other countries, they have referendums. And can we have some lessons from that in terms of before the event and after the event? Uh, and, 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 and also in the background about the Bougainville peace process and why is the referendum being held at this time? If you, it's, uh, you know, the peace agreement was in 2001. That's 20 years ago. The current generation of people working in government and working in, and we have, they have no idea about, uh, very little background information about what happened in Bougainville and the peace agreement. Dr. Webster hopes that this research will also help Bougainvillians make informed decisions during the lead up to the referendum and on the day of voting. What are the things that we need to make sure that it's a credible re referendum so that the results are respected by all parties? So that we say, yes, we had a good referendum, it was well done, and this is a result that we trust, that it, you know, it shows the wishes of the Bougainville people. And no one can say, no, that doesn't, that doesn't done properly. People were forcing them on the barrel of a gun to have that. Or they, 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 there are too many people on the common role and they didn't, you know, and we, they can't go to back to a court like you do in an election and say, we're disputing the result. You either accept the result or you don't accept it. And, and we don't want that to happen in the terms of Bogan. We want to have a good referendum that's well conducted and administered. And so the preparations for it require the attention of both governments. And, and he hopes that both Bougainvillians and the PNG government government are taking into serious consideration the aftermath of the referendum and especially how to deal with the results. Are we going to accept the 51 percent and 49 like the British exit result? Because 51, even if 49 percent say no we want to remain a part of PNG, that's, that's about half of the population. So. You know, so we have to look at the results and say, are we going to go a simple majority or we, do we want another sort of you know, margin to which we determine the results? Yeah. So, so have some thinking about if we vote for this, will we accept it and will we be able to lead, live with it? And so I think they need to think a bit more about what the future is likely to have it be and what are the effects and implications and then be able to have an informed vote as a result of that discussion that happens. Sarah Aupong. National MTV News.